Hi folks! In this video, I'm going to review the new B4 Galvo laser engraver from Calmarker. This machine has a 1064 nanometer fiber laser and comes in five sizes ranging from 20 watts to 100 watts of laser output power. Calmarker sent me the 20 watt version along with a 110 millimeter lens for engraving fine detail and a 200 millimeter lens to expand the engraving area. Like most Galvo lasers, the B4 only takes a few minutes to assemble and set up. The Z-axis rides on a motorized lead screw in the support column, which fastens to the motor shaft coupling and base with a few screws. The laser module fastens to the column bracket with a few screws as well, but it can also be used independently with the auxiliary holder. This machine is rated for engraving at speeds of up to 15,000 millimeters per second, which is more than 15 times faster than most equally sized gantry engravers, and it accomplishes this by moving small mirrors inside the module to move the laser beam around, instead of moving the entire module around on a gantry. Calmarker also sent me some accessories to go with the engraver, like the auxiliary holder for portable engraving, a foot switch for batch processing, a chuck rotary and driver for engraving round objects, wavelength specific safety glasses, and loads of sample materials for testing on. The B4 can be controlled through Lightburn by using the Galvo engraver license or the Galvo engraver license upgrade if you've already purchased the gantry version, or it can be connected to EasyCAD software that's provided on the USB drive with the machine. I've never used EasyCAD before, so I thought I'd give that a try and see how it works. At first glance, it doesn't look anywhere near as sophisticated as Lightburn, but that impression changed the more I explored its features. It has everything that a person needs to use the B4 to its full potential, and is free, so there's no extra cost to start using it. All you need to do is install the drivers on your computer and import the configuration file to EasyCAD from the USB drive, and it's ready to work. Like all of my engraver reviews, I started with test grids to gauge the engraving and coloring effect of various power, speed, hatch, and frequency settings on different materials. This first material that I tested was brushed stainless steel. After pressing the red button in the software, the module emits a few low power red lights to indicate the engraving area so that the workpiece can be positioned accurately, as well as two red dots. The laser's focal point can be set by using the hand crank on the column or the buttons on the base to raise the module up or down until these two dots converge into one on the work surface. Or you can use the provided ruler to set the right distance between the work surface and the bottom of the module. Each of these grid tests took around 5-7 to seven minutes to complete. The scrap of steel that I used was a bit too thin for the settings and it warped a bit from the heat. But you can see how different settings will produce different colors and shades, and some settings just engraved into the surface with no change in color. The 20 watt laser in particular can not only etch and mark metal and plastic surfaces, but it can also engrave metals to a max depth of 0.3 millimeters. Next I used the same test grids on a piece of aluminum, nickel plated copper, and bare copper. You can see that each piece produced different results, but they all have a wide range of settings to choose from to help boost your creativity and make your work stand out. Now that I have some settings to start with, I etched some logos onto a few copper and polished steel tags. For the copper piece, I used 100% power at 400 millimeters per second, and with a 0.05 millimeter line interval, crosshatch, and outline, it only took 16 seconds to finish. For the first steel tag, I used the same settings that I used for the copper, and it only took around 48 seconds to complete.
For the second tag, I used 25% power at 15,000 millimeters per second with a 0.06 millimeter line interval to produce a lighter color that will contrast with the blue coating better, and it only took around 15 seconds to complete. Next, I etched some coated aluminum business cards using the same settings as the blue steel tag, which took around 20 seconds each to finish. To demonstrate how precise the laser is, I etched some text onto a metal card ranging in sizes from 3mm in height down to just 0.5mm. It's almost impossible to see with the naked eye, but if I zoom in the camera and pause the frame, then you can still see the text well enough to read it. Next, I connected the laser to Lightburn software and set up an image of my logo and some text for 3D engraving into a piece of aluminum. The settings that I used were 100% power at 1000 mm per second, 30 kHz, 0.02 mm line intervals, and 100 passes with the image mode set to 3D sliced. This turned out really good. It took around one hour to finish and reached a depth of nearly half a millimeter. Of course, this also means that the laser can cut sheet metal like this 0.3 millimeter thick aluminum card, which took 100% power at five millimeters per second and 30 kilohertz to cut through in 24 passes. Of course, being a fiber laser, it can also engrave colored and opaque plastics like this glossy and matte black acrylic. The settings that I used for these were 10% power at 1000 millimeters per second, and they each took around one minute to complete. The B4 can also engrave high resolution photos. I use 10% power at 1000 mm per second, 20 kHz, and 400 dots per inch in Jarvis mode for this photo, which took around 2 minutes to finish. The power to mark and engrave metals gives this machine the ability to clean them with the right settings too, like this rusty mild steel tubing. For this I used 100% power at 12,000 mm per second, 100 Hz frequency and 0.1 mm line intervals and made 8 passes. Although there's still a bit of heavy rust left behind, it seems to have done a reasonable job. I'm sure that the higher power models would clean the rest of that up without a problem. Next, I moved on to testing the chuck rotary. This is probably the most rugged chuck rotary that I've received with any of my engravers. It's really high quality, and I like that the chuck is spring-loaded so you don't need a key to lock your workpiece in place. The spring can be moved to apply pressure in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, so you can clamp the outside or support the inside of round objects like tumblers, pens, or rings, for example.
In this case, I'm going to see how well it engraves text on the outside and inside perimeter of a ring. To use the rotary, I selected laser and rotate text mark from the menu in EasyCAD, then followed the instructions in the user manual to set the orientation of the rotary on the x-axis and change the spacing of the letters in the scale compensation field from 1 to 0 0.1. Then I clicked the red button to preview it before engraving. The small red box that appears in preview mode represents the position of the first letter in the text. Etching the outside worked well, so I tried the inside by angling the chuck enough so that the preview box and laser beam just clear the edge of the top of the ring and line up with the center of the bottom on the inside. This also turned out really good. The spacing is right, the letters aren't stretched or distorted, the color is consistent, and the laser didn't hit the top of the ring. The last thing that I want to show you is how it can be used as a handheld portable machine if you have something that you want to engrave but it won't fit on the base. I assembled and attached the auxiliary holder which is a spacer that can be turned and adjusted to set and maintain the proper focal distance to your workpiece and it doubles as a guard to help prevent injury in case you trip or slip for some reason while holding the module. So that's it for this video folks. Overall I think this is a really nice machine. It is a bit expensive, but this isn't really a hobby machine either. It's 5 to 10 times faster than other Galvo lasers that I've featured on this channel. I would definitely recommend the 20 watt model in particular for small businesses, but as I mentioned earlier they also have industrial versions with up to 100 watts of laser output power if that suits your needs better. If you're interested in this machine then check out the links in the video description below. If you enjoyed the video then let me know with a comment or a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching and take care folks.